Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mimi. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for being part of the Soul Tribe family. Welcome. This is a beautiful community. We welcome you. And if you already been an A1, day one, thank you for riding with me. Thank you for being my sister. Thank you for being my brother. So this message that I have that I wanted to share with my brothers and sisters uh, the reason I say my brothers and sisters because I do have male subscribers that said that I need to make my channel more, you know, I guess generic because, you know, you know, I'm not speaking for them. So I just want to make sure that when I talk about any Kingdom Spouse video, any series that I'm doing, I'm doing the Kingdom Spouse video series that it go for both ways. So, whether you're looking for your wife, I hope you find your spouse. Whether you're looking for your husband, I hope you find your spouse. So, I just wanted to make that clearly because I do get message about that where my male subscribers feel like I am not talking to them because they feel like that my channel is mostly, you know, generic to, to women. And I understand that. So, but I just wanted to, you know, to make sure that they are including that this message is very... It go for both for it. So the reason I'll say spouse or I'll say your significant other or I'll say your better half is whatever that you are looking for. If you hear this message, it's for you. So basically. So um, this message that I want to share with everyone, it was a few days ago. A few days ago, I remember I was just worshiping and and I was talking to God. And I was telling God, I said, God, okay, so you have this husband that's coming for me. It's all, you know, you you worked it out for me. And I said, and I told God, I said, you worked it out for me and everything is so perfect. I said, God, do I have to do anything else? Do I have to do any work? Do I have to, what, what else do I have to do to make this husband come? Because I've been waiting, like, forever. And then God said, I actually want you to do one thing. And God said, I actually do need your input because even though that I am, I'm sending this husband for you, I do want you to have a say so. And God said that this message, God said, tell my, tell my people have a love list or a love letter to their spouse. And God was showing me in the spirit that for me to write a letter to my husband, my future husband, and then the day we get married and I would give him this letter. It was just a very, like, you know how you know, like, I was, I've had worshiping music on and I was just in that gratitude and, and I was thanking God. I was like, thank you, God, you know, for every blessing, you know, think, like, I was really on the, like, I was vibing with God, I was feeling so good, thanking God for his blessing, thanking God for rescuing me, thank you God for saving me. It was like on something like that, and then God was telling me that God said, Your spouse it, it is coming because I already set that for you. But I do need you to have a say so. So you're gonna have to write a love letter or love list. A love list is what do you want in a husband? What do you want in a wife? So if you want to write a love list, tell God what you want. Because you experience so many, you know, heartbreak and people disappoint you and betray you. Tell God what you want and he's going to give it to you. If you don't know what you want, write a love letter to your future spouse. And the day you get married, you give that letter to your future spouse that said, before I met you, God had told me to write a love letter to you. I know you was coming. I just didn't know when. Sometimes I was impatient, but I knew you was coming. So this is my love letter to you. So if you hear this message, not a lot of people are going to get to hear this message. You know, one thing about God word is, is for the people that's looking for it. So if you're not looking for that type of, like, if you're not in love or you're not looking for no love message, then this is not your message. This is messages for people that have been told your husband is coming. You've been waiting. You've been hearing it. You hear so many 
Kingdom Spouse video and you have never met your husband. And you're like, God, what is going on? I'm just waiting and just waiting and just waiting and just waiting. And God said, now what I need you to do, the complete part that you have to do, God wants you, because it's your free will. You have free will. So God wants you to be part of it. So you have to do one thing. If you get to hear this message, this message is for you. If you're waiting for a spouse or you're waiting to get married, you have been, you know, you, 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 you've been in the isolation period for a long time and you graduated, you passed all the tests, got, you know, the tests that you needed to pass and you're ready to be with someone. So God said that, write a love letter to your spouse or write a love list. A list is what I want in the person. Like, let me give you an example. Oh, me, me, what do you mean? Okay, for example, if I were to do a love list, I would say, I want a godly man. <laughs> I want a man that's after God's heart. I need a protector. I need a God, you know, a person, the provider. And I need a person that have a kind heart like me because I have a very, you know, kind, sensitive heart. And I need to be someone with that's human, humanitarian. So he got to be like, be able to want to help the community and make the world a better place. If he's a selfish person, then he can't be with me because I'm all, I love giving. I love giving back. I love making the world a better place. So if you don't want to make the world a better place, why I'm trying to make the world a better place is not equally yoke. So this season, God is actually putting us with people. We are equally yoked. People that actually like the same thing we like. People we don't have to beg. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to question if they like us, if they feeling us, if they're going to dump us. Or another thing I said, with your past relationship, you overdid it. You always the one that, that, that buy the gift, that, that overdid it, that buy this, that did this, that paid for this. God said, with this, with your husband, with the person you meant to be with, you don't have to overdo nothing. You don't have to overreact. You don't have to overgive. You don't have to overimpress. Like, oh, I'm trying to impress this person. So I'm going to do things that's not even me just to impress this person. No, those was the fake people. The fake people, you had to impress them. But this person that's coming for you, they love your... The stuff that you find ugly about you, they love it. So, it's not the same thing. So, get comfortable. Get comfortable. Your husband is going to take care of you or your wife is going to take care of you. They're going to make sure that you are good. Because this time, you having someone that's coming in your life that actually love you. That's going to show you what love is about. You never had love. You never experienced love. You experienced heartbreak. People that backstab you. Even your mom and your dad. They couldn't, They was emo, not emotionally available for you. So you could never really express yourself. But your husband or your wife. This person is going to be very attentive, very sensitive to your spirit. They're going to be like mama bear or papa bear, overprotective over you, take care of you. Make sure nobody don't mess with you. Nobody steal from you. Nobody use you. Nobody do nothing to you. God is sending you. Um, if you ever remember that movie with when you Houston when she had that um uh, bodyguard movie, I don't remember the title, but God is sending you your husband is gonna be your bodyguard, he's gonna be your protector, he's gonna be your provider, he's gonna make sure that you know nobody going to come and hurt you ever again. The people that hurt you in the past, it was for a lesson. You had to learn the lesson. I had to learn that lesson. Even though I was like, God, what did I do? I didn't do nothing. I was just trying to show them love. But I, God showed me you was too naive. You was too gullible. So now that I have discernment, it, you know, it's different. So stop blaming yourself for what happened in the past. What happened in the past happened in the past. It teaches you to be a, a better person. 
Now you learning better. You know what mistake not to make anymore. You know what people not to hang out anymore. So everything happened. Now you have a better, a greater conscience. You are more mature now. People cannot play you. Back then, people could have pimp you. Now they can't play you. <laughs> they can even come and try to trick you and play you, give you any type of game to make you fall for or scam you. Because you you've been through it, you overcome everything. You have mastered it. You master poverty. That's why your next level is gotta be you rich. You master poverty. You know what poverty is like. You have mastered it because you have mastered a subject. You have to graduate. It's just like if you're in kindergarten, whether or you in eighth grade. If you you if you get your diploma, you gotta go to the next level. The the enemy have been trying to keep you like you in kindergarten or trying to keep you on one level when you already mastered that already. So life have to give you based on what you have done. And and another thing what I had to learn what the Holy Spirit have taught me. For long years ago, I always thought that, oh, God, I did so much. Why have you have you rewarded me for the good things that I did? One day, I stopped thinking about that. I said, God, I don't care what I did in this earth. I know I'm waiting for a reward just like everyone else. But I told God, I said, bless me based on your mercy, on your grace, on your favor. Bless me because you enjoy blessing me. The moment I changed that mindset, God has shown me how he blessed me. So it wasn't me that I have to go do the work. I have to go prove myself. I have to show that, oh, God said, I don't need you to bless you. God said, I don't need you to do a damn thing for me to bless you. I just need you to believe that I can bless you. Hmm. <laughs> If your faith is weak, you don't know, you don't have no faith, hit me up. A lot of people that have a uh, private session with me, their life has been excelling and great things been happening. This is your moment. When God send you people, use them. Use them. You remember there was a story about the God that was stuck and God sent him a boat. God sent him every transportation. He was like, no, he's waiting for the hand of God to come out the sky and save him. And he ended up drowning. Don't be those type of person. When God sent you a prophet, when God sent you a spiritual person, when God sent you someone that's been through hell, that know that could be a spiritual teacher that could teach you and make you not go through so many mistakes like them, use it. A lot of people act like they cannot afford my um, private session. And I do understand that. But there's some people that actually can't afford it. They just don't want to, you know, do the session because they feel like, oh, they don't. They're trying to make me rich or something. No, that's not how it is. You're supposed to want to bless your prophet. You're supposed to want to bless your teacher. You're supposed to want them to be healthy and wise and everything going good for them so they can continue to do their work. People have different thinking and weird thinking. I just don't understand it. I'm a type of person, if I see you doing good in life, I'm going to support you financially, you know, spiritually, whatever that I can do to make sure that you're doing well and staying on the top. Start celebrating other people. Start loving other people. Don't be a hater. One thing I learned about a hater spirit, you block your own blessing when you start envying other, jealous of other. Or wish you could be them. Don't want to be nobody but yourself. Because what you can do, nobody else can. Okay. So back to this message. It was, I just wanted to come out here and let you know that. Your husband, he is coming. Many people say, Mimi, I don't believe it. I've been here for so many years. How could you say this man is coming? You tell us to do all this thing. What if it never happened? <laughs> I believe I'm getting me a husband. I don't know about you. I'm getting married. God have shown me in the spirit. God said, I'm getting married. People have told me, oh, you have three kids. Ain't no husband going to marry you. <laughs> 
They can say whatever they want to say. I know I'm a wife. <laughs> I'm a wife. I don't have no girlfriend vibe. I have a wife vibe because of what I bring to the table. The husband that God had for me, he's going to accept me with three kids. And he's going to love my children. He's going to spoil me, bless me, and I'm going to do the same thing for him. <laughs> so you have to have that faith and know it's going to happen. If you, if your faith is like, I don't know, maybe. Can it happen, maybe? Are you sure? No. we don't. It's either you have faith or you don't. I have faith that I'm getting married. I have faith I'm going to meet my husband. I have faith that everything is going to work out for me. (laughs) That's just my faith. Nothing can change it. So what is your faith? Do you believe you're going to be a wife? Do you know for sure you're going to be a wife? Do you have that concrete Evidence like I know for sure, Mimi. I've been changing, I've been working, I've been doing everything. I know I'm gonna be a wife. And remember, this time that's coming around past relationship, you might think this relationship not gonna work, but God is putting people together because it's for a divine mission. I keep telling everybody it's a divine mission. Is a divine mission. You are lucky now because God is putting people together for his will. So you get to be lucky to be with your person. So in that way, everything work out. God is give, God is matching you with people that's good for you. Because he have a mission and you have to, you and your husband have to do that mission. So write a love letter to your husband or your wife. Even though, oh, it sounds silly. Why should I write a love letter? I never met this person. I don't even know if this person is going to happen. But write a love letter to this person. If you don't want to write a love letter, write a love list. What would you like this person to look? The type of finance, the type of heart, the type of soul, the type of spirit you want this person to be. This time you get to choose. You get to have a say-so. So now God is not just bringing you anybody, not anybody coming into your life. It's high-quality, good stuff that's coming to your life. That good love where you will never have to ask for a divorce. So this is the message that I, I want to have and I want to share with you. And just know that no matter what you go through in life, I have learned it's all for a greater purpose. At first, I was like, no, God, how could y'all be hurting? And you think that's a good purpose? But I had to learn everything that I went through. It has shown me to have more faith in the most high because it's like, God, you always rescue me every time. God always rescue me every time. Every darkness, every pain, everything I go through. God always come through. It it might be later. It may not be the time I want it. But the relationship with I have with the most high is the most amazing relationship that I want to have with anybody in this world. So if you if you have a good relationship with God, everything gonna work out for you. So don't care about what, who relationship with you have, whether you have with a husband or whatever. Make sure your relationship with God is straight. It's a one. Once you in love with God and God is in love with you, everything is gonna start working out for you because God want the best for you. God want the best for you. The ego, the flesh. Want self destruction and chaos and all that stuff, but God is a God of glory. Everything He does is to give His self glory. I want glory, so anything God do in your life is gotta bring Him glory. So God is not gonna do no messy stuff, no half stuff, no. Everything is gotta be amazing, the best of the best. So write your love letter to your husband, your future husband you never met. It sounds weird, but that's how faith works. You just got to believe it before you have it.
So believe that your husband is coming. He's going to be right next to you. You're going to get married. Your life is going to change and everything is going to be a new beginning. If you don't have that kind of faith, then nothing is going to ever happen for you because you're going to doubt yourself out and you're going to be like, no, it's not going to work out and it ain't going to work out. So this is the message that I have and I want to share with you. Write a love letter to your future spouse. And when you meet that person, give it to them. Say, see, I wrote about you. I know you was coming. Here you are. I hope everyone have a wonderful, blessed day. Bye-bye.